Within Crucial Conversations, we teach about the path to action, right? And this path to action is a way for us to have a mental model of understanding where our emotions come from, right? So that we see and hear things around us that uh, lends into uh, us building a story about what's going on around us. That story contributes to feelings that we have and that those feelings fuel our actions. Now, the use of understanding our path to action is because in moments where we feel like we want to karate chop someone in the face or slap some, slash someone's tires, we're like, well, I should feel a little bit differently about this person. So I need to create some new emotions in a moment like this. I need to create some emotions that are more conducive to or help promote healthy actions, right? Healthy actions that lead to an outcome that would be you know, more beneficial to our relationship or something like that. Now, as we look at, or as you can think about the way that we talk about this path to action playing out or creating new emotions in this moment, we talk about it happening in an actual finite sense, like in a very micro sense, I should say. So here you see kind of an outline of your life, everything from being a child all the way down to being an adult plus plus. Do you guys like how I put that there? Some of us are adult plus pluses in this room. But highlighted in red, we're just going to pretend that this is you and your adult years. And here you are talking to a colleague or a family member and you're finding yourself upset, defensive, frustrated, whatever it may be. And you're wanting to create some new emotions in this moment. So you examine your path, meaning you separate facts from stories. You try to determine what is my story here and am I willing to consider a new story that would promote some healthier uh, emotions that would promote healthier actions. But actually, there's a lot of research that goes to show that this application of re-examining our path to create new emotions can happen in a macro sense. So notice how the timeline changes. We have you on this timeline, but it's along a grander scale of those who have come before you and those who will come after you. That if you think about some of the seasons in your life, let's just be super real with each other. Each of you have a variety of seasons in your life where things are not super rosy. People upset us. We feel disappointed, betrayed. We're going through uh, depression or loneliness, whatever that may be. It's in these seasons that we could apply our path to action to create new emotions that can help us push beyond some of our self-defeating behaviors that would let us just kind of give in to these tough moments. Now, the research around it uh, has two different titles for it. Number one, it's called the ancestor effect. And actually, uh, the more specific science-y kind of name for it is ancestor salience, kind of immersing yourself in your own story the story of your ancestors, immersing yourself in the story of where you've come from and those who have come before you can do a whole world of good for you in creating new emotions in really tough, once again, seasons of your life. So I have two challenges before we move forward. Number one, I need you to start thinking about what you know of your own personal family history of those who have come before you. Uh, your father, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, so on and so forth. And I need you to pull out your smartphone or your laptop because we're going to do some polling, all right? So as you do that, let me give you some context or as an example. What you may or may not know about me on the surface, here I am, a young African-American male, is that um, my family history is that of, uh, one, one, one side of it, is uh, my grandfather was born to a, a pioneer family who settled the West, So they came out west and settled in southern Nevada in a place called Overton. Now, Overton is close to here. This is the Valley of Fire. Anybody been to the Valley of Fire out there? Raise your hands. Okay. A lot of folks been to the Valley of Fire. It is a hellish place. Okay. But their family nonetheless settled in Overton. And my grandfather, uh, his father died when he was two years old. So my grandfather and his three brothers uh, being left to be raised by, uh, by my great-grandmother, um, who was f- very impoverished at the time. Uh, my grandfather and, and his three brothers were raised in his uncle's back porch that was fenced in. So they just lived in the porch for years and years. Now, coming from those circumstances, you would probably imagine maybe we couldn't really chalk much up to this young man growing up in a situation like this. However, uh, when the war came around, World War II, he uh, went into the Air Force and was uh, a bomber, a B-17 bomber. 
And it turns out that he was a fairly prodigious pilot and became a major and flew in a number of different missions. Now, and it also turns out he was a member of the 447th Bomber Group. And in the 447th Bomber Group, if you successfully survived over 30 missions, you were considered a pretty lucky bastard. So he actually got an award (laughs) to be a member of the 447th uh, Lucky Bastards Club. What a wonderful award to receive. Now, now I offer this with some context here, because before this happened, before him um, going into the the Air Force and and, and having this uh, survival career, I guess I could could say, tragedy actually struck before this. Uh, He was married before the war, didn't really plan on going into the Air Force, and his first wife died in a horrific fire where her family owned a propane business and in a massive explosion, she and her siblings and parents uh, all burned to death in said fire. My grandfather, um, wanting to honor the memory of his wife, I mean, consider yourself in a situation like this, by the way, uh, in wanting to honor the, the, the love of his, of his wife, he went to the hospital and identified her body and pulled the wedding ring off of her finger to save that uh, just in um, remembrance of her. And we actually have that wedding ring uh, in our family today. Now consider that context of the deep hurt and despair you would be in to lose a family member to something like this, yet still trying to pull yourself together and having such a a career in the Air Force. Now, uh, the next part is where I come in. Uh, He then after, or during the war, I should say, on a hiatus, met my grandmother, and in meeting her, they say it was love at first sight, and it was over after that. Five kids and a wonderful life after that. No, I'm just getting a lot of uh, hardship, but interesting to note, my grandfather became one of the early uh, uh, business partners of Colonel Sanders with KFC. So in these locations that you see here, he was the uh, franchise owner of those areas when KFC first burst onto the scene in the United States. So Northern California, uh, Montana, Southern Nevada, and Northern Mexico. And he was also a a fairly successful real estate developer, land developer in the greater Las Vegas area. Um, And he owned and sold all of the land that McCarran Airport is on. If you've flown into or out of McCarran Airport, in the D gates, our family's home was right in the middle of where the D gates are. (laughs) Kind of random, right? I know. And uh, he also owned and sold the land that uh, UNLV is currently placed on today. Now, I share with you that story because knowing something like that about your own past can do a world of good for you to develop emotional intelligence in tough moments. All right, so let's do a quick poll, a quick quiz. We're going to find out from you what you know about your family. Now, we're just talking facts. Pay very particular attention to that word. How many of you know a fact about your parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, Uh, great-great-grandparents, or your really, 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 really old ancestors. Go ahead and chime in. Okay, some interesting results. Some of you are some grand historians in this room. This is a beautiful thing. Okay. All right, now if you take that context, we're actually going to expand it. Notice I just said fact. Now, let's actually try to figure out how many of you know a full story or the full history of said ancestors. How many of you know a full story or the full history of someone who's gone before you? Okay. Now, as these results are coming in, let me give you some context then, because we're about to get real with each other, and I need you to be super honest with me. Knowing this information is meant to do a lot of good for you, okay? It's supposed to serve you a great benefit in a tough time. So now that you are willing to admit or willing to say or thinking about all this great stuff you know about your ancestors, let's actually apply it to our third poll. What emotion best describes the current season that you find yourself in in your life? How many of you are struggling through a variety of things? Maybe you're feeling freaking fantastic. Or rainbows, leprechauns, and unicorns are your best friend. That may be the case as well. Now, as we look at some of these answers, aside from our goofy answers below, we've got some really interesting people that are suffering through some stuff in this room. If you find yourself in a season where you're feeling lonely or depressed or upset or despondent and whatever that may be, the ancestor effect is uh, meant to serve you some benefit. 
Now, the ancestor effect then goes to say that if you're willing to consider these storylines, that you can create new emotions because you're re-examining your story of where you've come from to promote healthy actions in these tough times. Now, speaking of the research, you're going to see a lot of details on the screen. You're welcome to download, uh, the, download these slides to look at it more in depth because we won't read all of the words on the screen. Albeit, I'm going to point out three emotions at the top of the screen. One emotion is that of nostalgia, that it can serve you a great benefit it by looking at your past. And once again, we'll dig into this in a second. The second emotion is of that of confidence, that you can have greater confidence in where you're going, considering from where you've come from. And then third, an emotion of gratitude, that gratitude can be a, a great propelling factor in the choices that you make. So what we're going to do now is plug these into the path to action and see some of the benefits that it can, it can provide. So if you see in here a lot of facts about your ancestors and read about that, one of the potential stories you could tell yourself is admiration for where you've come from. And that admiration can provide great nostalgia, this feeling of well-being, okay, that you're part of a greater whole. And the actions that may come from that are being more calm, more pensive, more patient in a time where you just may want to um, make a rash decision. If we look at the feeling of confidence as you research your past and where you've come from, that the story you may tell yourself is that if they can do it, I can do it. And I've got confidence now in the choices that I make moving forward. You may be more creative. You may be more diligent in what you're trying to achieve. And then last but not least, the feeling of gratitude. This idea is that by researching your past, you may value the price that's been paid for the, from those before you. And then the emotion of, of gratitude, quite frankly, is tied very interestingly to your capacity of having more willpower, of making a more determined choice. Now, we've made a kind of a presupposition thus far that your past may be rosy and something wonderfully to, wonderfully to, uh, to learn from, but that may not always be the case. So that's why this picture's here. This uh, lovely lady is my mom. Yeah. My mom has given me a whole host of different wonderful things. But in the context of what we're talking about, one of the greatest gifts that my mother has given me is the capacity to tell a new story even in the midst of a negative past. I grew up without a father. And all the statistics about an African-American male in a single-parent home uh, go to show that the outcome isn't really that great. But my mother has been a paramount example to me of looking at the positive story that can come from our past, of learning from my grandfather to know uh, about where I came from there. Or, even though my father wasn't around, she was so wonderful in helping me look at the positives of my father on his good intentions, even though he may not have been around. So my mother was instrumental in helping me develop a new story, even based on a static number of facts. So I'm going to offer you a different emotion to consider for your own life as we're looking at our past, because your past may not be that great. Maybe you're not too uh, happy or proud of it. So the story you could tell yourself is that you want to be the person who starts new today that you are going to write a new story for the future. And that that feeling, that emotion can be of hope. Hope that you can be a pioneer to a new path. That things can change on your watch. So, as you look at this feeling of hope, this desire to create a new, I'm gonna show you an example of the new story that I'm currently creating. That's this little guy. That's my little son Truman, right? Thank you. I didn't do any work with Truman. I mean, that's my wife's deal. But uh, Truman is, is 10, uh, 10 weeks old uh, a couple of days ago. And this little man, I love to no end. But as we talk about writing a new story, I want to write a new story for my son. I can realize that the choices that I'm making today can contribute to him having some emotional intelligence in his own tough moments later on in life. I want my son Truman to know that our family is trying to create a new story right now. I want him to come to see that his grandfather was a wonderful pioneer of persevering through tough hardships. I want him to know that his forebears from my father's side overcame insurmountable odds through slavery, through establishing equal rights, and an amazing number of stories of people that came from that line. And I also want him to know that his dad is trying to write a new story um, that he's trying to be a dad even though he didn't have a dad. 
and I want my son to know that he can write his own story. So my invitation to you is to consider what's your story. Is your story that of a past that can provide you a powerful new emotion for the moment where you're finding yourself struggling or frustrated? Is your story one such that it's too painful to look at the past, so you wanna look to the future, and you're willing to have a whole, a whole lot of hope in the story that you're currently writing right now? But overall, I challenge you to consider what is your story and to see the power in writing a new one today. Thank you.